When you use a cell phone or a wireless device near your head, some of the wireless radio frequency radiation is absorbed into your brain, your eyes. This is a 2018 study published in Environmental Research, which was the first to model cell phone radiation in a virtual reality position in a child model. The study found that compared to adult models, children experience two to threefold higher radio frequency radiation doses to their eyes and frontal lobe when the cell phone is used in the virtual reality position. The colors you see represent the rate of radio frequency radiation absorption into tissue with the most intense levels being yellow and orange. Our organization was a lead petitioner in a case against the FCC regarding radio frequency radiation exposure limits. And in August, 2021, the US Court of Appeals for the DC Circuit ruled in our favor finding that the FCC had ignored scientific evidence and failed to provide a reasoned explanation for its determination that the FCC's 1996, now two decade old regulations were still adequately protective of human health. The court ordered the FCC to provide a reasoned determination and specifically to address the evidence on impacts to children and long-term exposures. Now the court specifically noted that the FCC ignored the American Academy of Pediatrics repeated letters, which stated that children are more vulnerable to wireless radiation. Scientific studies document that children's brains are more sensitive as they're still developing. Plus there is a deeper penetration, more intense penetration into their brains. They have thinner skulls and smaller heads and they'll have a lifetime of exposure. Peer reviewed research has demonstrated a myriad of adverse biological effects from radio frequency, including brain cancer, DNA damage, oxidative stress, altered brain development, headaches, damage to reproductive organs, and memory damage. A recent published review found that the majority of animal studies and cell studies had increased oxidative stress within regulatory limits. And the authors note that adverse conditions such as diseases like diabetes, neurodegenerative diseases, compromise the body's defense mechanisms, including their antioxidant protection mechanism. And individuals with pre-existing conditions are more likely to experience health effects. A just published letter in the Journal of the National Cancer Institute by US experts concludes that there is a need for the public to reduce exposures to radio frequency radiation now. However, the FDA website inaccurately communicates to the public that safety is assured. The FDA has even written elected officials that they've evaluated all the scientific evidence when in fact they have not shown any review of the totality of the science. There is a now outdated FDA literature review, but it's only on cancer and cell phones. It does not review science on children's vulnerability, oxidative stress, impacts to brain and memory, and it dismisses the $30 million National Toxicology Program study that the FDA itself requested, a study that found DNA damage and concluded clear evidence of cancer. Importantly, it does not meet scientific criteria to be a risk assessment nor an evaluation of FCC regulatory limits. Yet the FDA wrote Senator Tammy Baldwin that the agency has conducted and published a detailed literature review of all of the scientific evidence that has become available over the past decade and updated our web pages related to all aspects of radio frequency radiation from cell phones. We are opposed to the FDA taking any action that increases or allows radio frequency radiation to children's brains, especially in the virtual reality position, until there is a science-based, up-to-date, transparent research review and risk assessment that's been completed by independent experts with the opportunity for public comment. There was no pre-market safety testing for long-term exposure. There is no ongoing US government review nor post-market surveillance related to wireless radio frequency radiation. Here are some questions to ask the FDA. Where is the up-to-date research review on the totality of the science? Where is the risk analysis on impacts to a child's developing brain and eyes from radio frequency radiation? In light of the research on oxidative stress and brain damage, what could the potential health effects be from the FDA policy allowing exposures to the brain from virtual reality in a medically vulnerable population such as pediatrics? What are the actual exposures into children's brains, bodies, and eyes from virtual reality in medical settings, and who is monitoring it? Who will be monitoring side effects, and how will that data be collected and analyzed? And how can the FDA transparently communicate the level of their review and uncertainty about the long-term safety of virtual reality? 
Many countries are light years ahead of the United States in protective policies. In Cyprus, there's a public awareness campaign with full-scale bus ads on public buses, educating parents on how to reduce exposure. The Archbishop Macarius Hospital has removed wireless from the pediatric and neonatal wings. Belgium has banned the sale of cell phones designed for young children. And in France, when you buy a phone, you're informed to keep it away from the head of children, away from the abdomen of teenagers and pregnant women.